On the build show today, I got a really fun episode for you. See the shipping container back here? That shipping container is full of European made triple glazed windows that are going in this house right here. This is the house we framed with T studs. Now this house kind of uses normal components except for this truck. And this truck has some shoe code, triple glaze, ultra performance windows and doors. And believe it or not, this truck full of windows that got shipped all the way overseas and then delivered to the port of Houston and then trucked to my job site costs less than standard double glazed windows that might have come from a domestic manufacturer. Today's video is sponsored by European Architectural Supply. Let's get going. All right, the crew has made some great progress. So what are we talking about today? These windows are from Schuko. That's a uh, German window manufacturer. And Schuko has kind of an interesting deal in that uh, all across Europe, there are different manufacturers of windows that are Schuko dealers. Um, they've got Schuko equipment, Schuko extrudings, uh, all that stuff. But in, in Europe, the way they do it is kind of every town, every country has their own window manufacturer that delivers to that local area. And Shuko is this large conglomerate that makes equipment and extrudings, and they're kind of quote unquote licensed to make their product. So I bought these through European Architectural Supply. They're out of Boston. These are made overseas in Europe and then shipped on that container that you saw earlier to me on my job site. Now this is a, a different sort of animal than what we're used to seeing in America. Number one, really, really high performance specs. These triple glazed windows are somewhere between, now there's a bunch of different window stickers out here, somewhere between like 0.11 to 0.13, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we're talking about windows that have a U factor of like R7 point something. That's really high compared to most American windows that are just double glaze that are somewhere around 0.30. These are at least twice as insulative as a lot of those windows that you're used to seeing. And like I said, uh, price-wise, very, very competitive. Now this is a UPVC product, which means the frame on this, instead of being uh, PVC or vinyl, like a lot of inexpensive windows in America, the U stands for unplasticized PVC. It, they don't put softeners in the uh, kind of process to make the, uh, the UPVC. So they're, they're a little harder, they're a little stiffer, they're able to take the heat better. They're also recyclable, which is kind of cool. There's a host of other benefits to using UPVC, and that's real standard in Europe, a little out of the ordinary to see those in America. What I like about these windows from Shuko is that I can also specify a foil facing. Maybe a little hard to see on the light here, but this, this facing you're seeing here, it looks like an, an all aluminum window, but in fact, that's a foil that's been applied to the inside and the outside. And I can specify that in all types of varieties. Uh, you see this a lot in places where they've put a wood foil on there. And from a foot away, you have no idea. It's not really a wood window. Like when we went to the dealership uh, with my buddy Steve Basic, who introduced me to these guys, I saw some incredible what I thought were wood windows, but no, they were UPVC with a foil. For this house, though, we opted to go with uh, this kind of charcoal color. I think this is a real popular color. I like it a lot. It was about a 15% bump in cost, something like that. Now I've got a couple different styles of windows in this house. These two right here are fixed windows and you're gonna see that the fixed windows are installed with a clip system. This is a metal clip that gets popped into a bracket on the side of the frame that actually is a structural connection and then screwed into the structure of the house. We're gonna do those on somewhere between a one foot and an 18 inch on center. So that these can really take some serious high winds. But uh, the other way to do it, or the other way to install it, is like this window. Now this window, I don't have the handle on right here, but this is a, uh, a tilt turn window, which means when I turn the handle down, the window is gonna open up. When I turn it up, the handle, the window is gonna vent, and it's actually gonna tilt on the bottom and vent into the house. Now this window is pre-drilled through the jam and we're using these long screws that they're referred to as turbo screws. You can see they're threaded the entire way. So technically we don't have to shim those when we screw them. And those pre-drilled areas, we're screwing all the way into the jam through there. 
Now we need to do some air sealing and some waterproofing. On the outside, you'll notice that I pre-applied uh, for my waterproofing the Huber's Zip System Stretch Tape. I did that on the sills, and the guys did that on the jams and all the way up into the head section. We did that all the way back into the framing, and then we did that on the outside. So now my entire opening is totally waterproofed. It's gonna be a little hard to see with this light here, but the guys also have sloped the sills on these windows. See if I can get my little flashlight out here. There's about a five degree bevel or so on these cripples underneath. And so I've got a pre-sloped sill. I don't need to use a cedar uh, pan or some other way to get sloping on there. These are pre-sloped so that now when I put my waterproofing on, if there were be, to be some incidental moisture in there, it's sloped to the outside. Now this part's gonna blow your mind a little bit if you're an American builder. I'm used to seeing flanged windows uh, where I have a nailing flange on the outside. Obviously we've got no nailing flange here. And I'm also used to it having a weep spot and uh, not putting any tape on the bottom of the windows. But we're actually not doing that here. These windows are made to a much higher standard and are very, very bulletproof. So the manufacturer recommends, and the way they do this all over Europe when I traveled through there, is they actually tape it complete on all four sides. Now when I'm installing the sill on this tape, I've actually left two strips of backer on there when I put the back on so that I'm waterproof from a bulk water perspective. But if any incidental moisture were to get in there, it would weep out. That's just kind of my, uh, my American version. But then on the outside, or I should say on the inside of the window, I'm gonna finish off this uh, install to be an airtight install one of two ways. Either we could use some Sega tape on the inside for air sealing, and I saw that all over Europe. Another method I really like though is using Prosecco's air dam. We're gonna use some low expansion foam around the window uh, to add some extra insulation. We're gonna put a backer rod in there, and then after the backer rod goes in, we're gonna put a nice fat bead of Prosecco air dam all the way on all four sides of this window and now we're gonna be totally air sealed. Now that we talked about the windows, let's take a break for a minute. Let me show you this awesome door going in. All right guys, install time. We've actually installed quite a few windows, but this big boy, this is the first time I've installed a Shuko lift and slide of this size too. That's a two panel uh, glass right there. It's six foot wide and about eight foot tall. This is a big boy, but let's talk about the opening that we prepped over here first. What's going on here is this will uh, come onto a patio or a deck space. So we're up off the ground and the guys did a great job of prepping the opening with Huber stretch tape. So the stretch tape is in here and you can see we've made a pan for this to sit in. And this is three quarter uh, Advantech decking. And we've cut that to allow this to be a pan for us. So basically we're three quarter down here from the subfloor and then I'll have a three quarter hardwood on top of that. That's also reducing the height uh, of the sill. But that big door that you see there, that's the fixed panel which is in place now. And the operable lift and slide is out for the install. Now this is gonna be a clip system install, meaning just like the windows, we're gonna install a clip into the track and actually uh, screw that clip in. And uh, let me show you one prep thing we did on the inside too here before we, uh, before we move that door. We prepped this with some 5 8 shims. This is a 5 inch thick Huber Zip System sheathing, which is gonna be the same thickness as my drywall. So now we're gonna bring that door in and make sure it's flush with this 5 8 here. And we're gonna come out a little bit from the jam. We framed this uh, with T studs, which are basically a five and a half inch thick stud. And then we've got one inch uh, Zip R3 on the outside of this house. But let's, uh, let's watch this big boy get muscled into place. As you can see, we're using these Woods Power Grip suction cups. Man, those make a really big difference moving a heavy door. I don't know what the weight on this single operable panel is, but it's up there. It's gotta be uh, three or 400 pounds, somewhere in that 
in that range. But with four cups and four guys, we're able to move that around. Now when we set the door, before we set it, we totally waterproofed the opening, again with that stretch tape. You also notice there's a back dam on the back of that. We've got a three-quarter back dam that we set up against our uh, Advantex subfloor so that any water that got down into that sill would hit a back dam and everything's fully waterproof. And then before we set the door, we put a couple beads of Prosico's Fast Flash. Prosico makes uh, these fluid applied products from their Argard family. Fast Flash is a great one to use because uh, it's gonna act as a waterproofing and air sealing. And actually it has some adhesive properties as well. So by putting that underneath the sill there, we're gluing that sill into place. We're also keeping water and air and bugs out of that space. And then we're gonna lift this last panel on. This is the operable panel that's moving. What you didn't see is uh, prior to the guys doing all this, they put a laser on that sill and we shot that laser on the sill. So that sill, the sub sill, was totally dead flat. That means that when we install this door, we've got a nice flat door. We don't want any ghosting on that door moving or rocking, so having a dead flat sill makes a really big difference. And then we've only installed a couple of the straps, but see those metal straps that you've got there on the head? There's three of them right now. That's our security. That's what's holding the door actually in place are those straps. And again, when we're all done, we're gonna have those on somewhere between a 12 inch and an 18 inch on center with those straps. All right, last thing on these windows, let's open this one up, I wanna show you. One of the reasons that these windows are so good is not just the glass. Yes, this is triple glaze with a high R value, but check out all the ways that this window is pushing or locking into the frame. When I move that handle, every one of these moves on the outside of the house, or on the outside of the window frame, I should say. And let's count how many points of contact we have. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points of contact. So when I close this window, in fact, I got an air compressor going outside, it's gonna be really, really sealed, very airtight. It's gonna make a much quieter window. So part of our efficiency is yes, from that triple glazed glass. The other part of our efficiency is that really, really tight air seal. And we're gonna tune this glass a little bit depending on what part of the country you're in. So in Texas, uh, I want, yes, a low U factor. That's the, um, that's the resistance of heat flow, the R value, right? But I also want a low solar heat gain coefficient. And when I ordered these, I was able to order these with a really low SHGC. That means that when the sun hits the glass like it is now and is kind of splaying into the house, 80% of that sun's energy is blocked. Only 20% is making it through. If I was in a northern climate where it's really cold outside, I actually might want some of the sun's heat to help heat up my house a little bit. But the beauty of these is I can order them. And again, even though they're made overseas and ordered from Boston, I can tune this exactly to what I want for my climate. And the last thing that I'll mention here is my wall is super efficient house. I got T studs, I've got zip R. By the time I'm done filling the insulation in this cavity, I'm gonna be close to R30 in this cavity. Why would I mess with a standard double glaze window that's around R3 or let's say R3.3 when I could get basically double the performance, double the insulation value in a product like this, which is basically cost competitive with an American made wood window. Guys, I really like these. I highly recommend you check them out. Let's raise our standards for American buildings. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description for these guys so you can talk to them about your house. And if, depending on where you are watching this in the world, you probably are familiar with the Shiko brand, massive brand worldwide, but really almost unheard of here in the United States. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey guys, a couple quick afterthoughts after we finished the video. I was thinking, you know, I, I, I didn't tell quite the whole story from the job site. So I did want to mention, you know, I visited their showroom, EAS that is, European Architectural Supply. They're based out of Boston. And my buddy Steve Basic introduced me to them. And one really cool thing about visiting their showroom that I didn't really tell in the video here was that they carry several, like six different brands of windows and doors besides just Shuko. They've got UPVC, aluminum windows, wood windows, and wood aluminum clad. 
They make windows for high-end luxury houses as well as uh, high-rise affordable housing type units. Now I got the Shuko for my project, but they even carry a more affordable brand of Salamander UPVC windows that compete with some of the mass market uh, windows here in the U.S. The Salamander windows are interesting as they got some laboratory testing recently which fits the commercial AW100 PSF rating which uh, according to EAS means that the top rated UPVC window in the U.S. market. Very high performance at a really good price. Now when buying your windows from another continent it's important to consider a few factors. You want to have a project of a certain size so the cost savings are going to cover some or all the shipping costs. You also want to work with an importer that won't just sell you the windows, but will help you install them potentially and service them down the line. And European Architectural Supply has been around for 18 years, so this is one of the most reputable, best companies for these types of windows. And of course, they sponsored today's video, uh, but I've gotten to know Patrick, the owner of the company. They really have some great people there. They made the process really easy. And I got to say, at the end of the day, very impressive package on this Shuko, but like I mentioned, they've got a bunch of different options. So if you're thinking about this for your house, give these guys a call, consider them uh, as you're thinking about windows. And, um, and thanks for joining me for today's video.